Hi, everybody that's joining my Zoom class on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be painting Half Dome today on a little piece of paper that goes into a little mat. Here's my little piece of paper and here's my little mat. So what I did first was I flipped it over and I traced the circle so that you can't see the pencil mark. And then I looked at my photograph up here and I just did a freehand sketch of Half Dome. With just a regular pencil. Because I think when we get the sky in and these grays, the pencil line won't really show up. So here we go. I'm going to use my new favorite brush. And I'm going to wet the sky around Half Dome and Clouds Rest. When I have drawn a painting, and haven't painted over it yet, I can erase the pencil marks. But once I paint over the pencil marks, they're permanently part of the painting. Mm. So if you want to do any erasing, do it before you start painting it. I have a little bit of tape there. It's not going to be in the way though, because it's outside this oval. Okay, so that's damp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the, the blue part of the sky. So there's some blue here, that little spot, which is actually just that tiny little spot in my drawing, and right in here. I'm going to use Antwerp blue for that. And I cleaned out my paints this morning. So this Antwerp's pretty clean. So there it is, just very little, tiny, just a touch, brush touched up Antwerp. I did touch my paper towel, and I'm going to put that Antwerp right here and right in this area. And what this doing, what, what this does, putting the Antwerp on both sides of Half Dome like this, is that it lets us know that the, that Half Dome is in front of this sky and that the sky um, is continuous behind it. So, and I've talked about this probably a hundred times, and I think you've all heard it at least 10 or so, that whenever you have something in, in something's in, in front, you have to put the same color on both sides. It's exactly the same thing with half dome. Because then that makes your eye know that that thing in front is the thing behind it is all the way behind it and this is in front. Because otherwise your brain gets confused. What I'm going to do now is just make some purple. And I'm going to do it with permanent rose and French ultramarine blue. And see what it looks like. It's a little bit too bright. I'm going to add a little bit of Antwerp to it. And then that makes it a little bit darker purple, more like the clouds. So this purple that I made just now is both French ultramarine blue and Antwerp with permanent rose. And now I'm just going to start here where it's darkest. It's darkest right in here. And then really the, it's going to go up over Half Dome. So this is important to keep this line kind of smooth. And then over here. And then I'm going to do one of my most favorite things, just paint with a little water. So it's not really water though, I'm just going to, my brush is now fairly clean. You can see I've got, still got a little paint in it, but it's mostly water. I touch my paper towel 
And then if I go up into it, oh, it really turned purple. There's a lot of pink in that. Those kind of look stormy, like you could start and then not make it. Especially with all that snow, there's no way we're going to make it. I want to just, no, I think I'm going, to, I'm going to leave mine. So I don't have the same colors as the photograph. I have more of a pinkish purple. I could, I could put a little indigo into my purple petal. I'll, I'll do that. Just the tiniest bit of indigo into my purple petal. It's going to really make it darkish gray now. And if I add a little bit of that in, it'll really make those clouds look like they're cold. And if I have a little bit over on this side, I need to just put the tiniest bit over here too. So same idea. And now I have a thirsty brush and I'm just sort of blotting it so I don't have too harsh of lines. Here, there's my sky. And the thing about skies is, it's good not to overdo them. Where I'm going to go to now is the rock face of Half Dome. Because um, the, I don't want to touch anything that's uh, wet now. So the, the rock face of Half Dome is pretty much that sky color with a little bit of burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. That makes the gray. So burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue makes gray. And that's the gray of those, the rocks. The reason that it's striped going down is that the water cascades down the face and leaves stains from, from the water. So I'm going to paint this dry onto dry. And all my brush strokes are going to be coming down, streaking down, just like the water runs down. I'm going to very carefully go on this face here so that I get the feeling that the dome is there. The little lip right there. And then this part's, I think it's more shadow than anything. Get this first layer on and then if it needs another layer that's easy to add and darken it up. And there's a couple lighter streaks in there. I don't want to leave them white because they're not really snowy. They are just the rock not being as stained. And I'm going to use, you know, my mat's gold. I guess I could use gold in that little spot, raw sienna. I think in the first one that I did yesterday, I used burnt sienna, but I'm going to see how it looks with the yellow and the gold. I like it a little better, I think. Yeah. Always. If, your mat, if your mat has a gold liner like mine does, it's nice to have that little bit of gold in there. So I have to thank Chris again for uh, turning, turning me on to that gold paint. I just love it. So that's the first layer. It's not quite dark enough, especially at the, where the face hits the dome and the snow. So I'll put another layer in there. So it's burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue makes the gray, and then I'll add that purpley color. There's a lot of purple in this face. And my brush strokes are very streaky coming down. Okay. 
I just hit the Antwerp instead. You don't want that, right? Yeah. Okay. So French, burnt sienna. That makes my gray. Add a little bit of permanent rose in there. That makes the purpley color. And I want to get nice and dark this face. Getting there now. Very streaky. Okay, so that's the face. Now I'm going to go to this. This is the other part of Half Dome right behind it here. So this is just the same colors, but not as much paint and a little bit more water. So the face of Half Dome is closest to us. It's the darkest. And then this in here is paler. Because it's farther away. Not that pale, but getting there. So that gives us three layers now. We've got half dome and the sky and, and this layer, which is paler than the face. The next layer that I'm going to put in is this set of trees. And to make those trees, I'm going to use my favorite green, which is Antwerp Blue and Burnt Sienna. That's pretty close. To paint the trees, I'm just going to use this very tip of my little brush and just put some close together, some more spread out, some taller, it's all along the edge here. And let's go down a little bit more in this area. Over to here and then they come down. I can add a little bit more burnt sienna and ch change the colors of some of those. They're being really creative. I could add a couple little purple spots in there too. And then I have a little area here that I just want to kind of smudge. There's a shadow there. It's a purpley blue shadow. There's some rocks showing, a few little trees kind of sticking out. It's going to be uh, um, just barely hiding in my mat. It doesn't really, it needs to be darker blue. So I'm going to get my French out, add it to that little puddle. Okay, here we go. That's better. It's like more like a shadow. That shadow, I'm not sure what that is from this spot. I think it's the one of the three sisters. That's better, I think, with the mat. Yeah. Just put a little darker shadow there. It's not the same shape as the picture, but 
because I have this work, this oval mat, if I just darken that spot right in there, my eye just naturally kind of fills it in. Thank you. So I have a really Two more things to do. One is the top of the dome, and then over here on this part of the painting, which is called Cloud's Rest. So I think I'll just go to the top of the dome now. And really, the dome is uh, granite colored, and there's mostly snow over it, but you can just see some spots, and it, they kind of make little curves because the uh, granite breaks away in these sort of curved lines up there and then that's where the snow stops. So it's the same color as the face, whatever that was, <laughs> burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue is the gray and I'm going to make it a little warmer with a little bit more burnt sienna. So, so what I have in my brush right now is burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue, but it's mostly burnt sienna. And I'm going to use the side of this brush. So my paint is pretty pale. I touch my paper towel. So there's just very light color in my brush. And I'm going to use the belly of my brush, the side of it right now. And I'm going to sort of make little scrapey, round scrapies. If I, if I let the tip touch, I'm going to get little lines. I don't want that. I want little scrapes. Okay. It's all right. I'm going to go a little darker about top here. Some of that purple's in there too. I'm adding a little more color to my brush. I want to get just a couple little scrapes over the top of this that are a little darker. And then I want to put just a couple little shadows in the snow on the dome. And I'm going to use, so I'm having a dilemma in my mind because mostly I think that the best snow shadows are always Antwerp blue, but this snow shadow here is not Antwerp blue. That's mostly French with burnt sienna, but I am going to go with a little bit of Antwerp blue up, I don't know. I'm having a dilemma because I, I painted my snow shadows with Antwerp blue for so many years, but it doesn't really look Antwerp blue in this picture. So do I paint it what I see or do I paint what I used to do all the time? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go with what I see today. So I'm going to take a little bit of French ultramarine blue. I'm going to put a little Antwerp in it that I can't help myself. And I'm just going to put a little bit at the top of the dome. And then with a little bit of water, just a really clean brush, I'm going to sort of make that disappear. Yeah, I like it actually. It's very subtle. Can't even see it on the screen, but I can see it on my little piece of paper. And then one other thing I'm noticing is that right at the face, it doesn't just totally drop off. There's a couple of little lines where there's some snow and then there's some cracks and then there's some snow. So I'm just going to add a few little darks here up in the snow. Yeah, I like that. And I think looking at my screen, I can see the dome 
painting versus the dome picture, and the dome picture's got another layer of darkness. So I'm gonna work on the face. I'm gonna put another layer on the face. So burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue makes my gray, my gray for my rocks. And there really is some purple in the face of this mountain. So I'm gonna make a little purple. And my purple is French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna with Antwerp. There it is. I think if I just put that over the face of this, I'm gonna get a darker, oh, we gotta be brave. I think I like it. I like the purple. Even the little light areas. Yeah, I love half them so much. I think that's better on my painting. I really only have one last thing and it's Cloud's Rest. This is right in here. And these, there's a, there's a layer of trees way back here. I just painted it purple because there's purple in my brush. And it's really the same color as this layer of trees, this foreground layer of trees, except it's farther away. So it's not going to be as bright. If you had a little viewfinder and you, you saw what the value of this was versus this, you'd see that this is lighter than this one. The one farther back is lighter than the one in the foreground. So I'm going to use the same colors, but a little more water. And I'm just going to, and it's not as detailed. I can't see every tree back here. There's a few little bumps in it, but I'm not painting every tree because you just, you can't see it. Maybe a, a tiny bit darker than I have it. Just a tiny bit, yeah, it's better. That's better, yeah. So that's really just a little line of green that's not as dark as this foreground green. And then, this just needs a little smudging. And it's, uh, what color is this part in here? Sort of purple, sort of brown, sort of green. Those colors that I have. But definitely paler than, absolutely paler than both the face and this layer of rocks here. And I don't want to make, this is not, this is, this is not my focal point. This is just kind of a quiet part of the painting that needs to be there to give it continuity, but it's not going to scream at us. There's no detail in this part. Now what I managed to do was make it all as darker than, than this one here, but that's easy. This, I'll just put another coat on another layer on this one so that it becomes 
So the face is the darkest and then this will be lightest and this one here in the middle will be medium. So it just needs another coat to get that. To get it to be in the medium spot. That's easy enough. Purples. It's all craggy too. There we go. And then right in here, what's this? More trees. Trees and snow. So again, this part right here is not as detailed as this foreground here and not as pale as that part. So again, medium. It's like um, Goldilocks. Just right. didn't sign it anywhere. I think right in this little set of trees, I could get my initials in there, or I could get them right in here. I'll go right in there. I'm gonna use my knife, because it makes a little, tiny little, M, K, J. Woo, that was loud. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can get those to show up. MKJ, where are you, MKJ? There you are. There. There's my little painting. Nice. So all the people who love Half Dome, I could just give that to them. That's great. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's so loose. Yeah. <laughs> Hold it back a little bit. Hi. 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 You're being disruptive. You're being yeah, disruptive. your colors are gorgeous. Very and the looseness nice. is beautiful. Your sky is beautiful. Yeah. Um, the shape of the dome is so critical to half dome. Uh, this, yeah, I, didn't, so I feel like I quite got that. You might be able to fix it. Because you're, that is really a beautiful little painting. Thank you. My light went out, so I don't know if you can see it. We, we can see it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Your purples are gorgeous. Yeah, we know where that <laughs> is. And it feels cold because your face is nice and dark. And so it feels like you need your jacket on. It's definitely winter there. It's lovely. Really nice job. Be it's beautiful. You've got the shape of half dome, quite nice. And uh, your layers, the where you have it soft is really nice. I like the negative in the trees. You didn't paint them all and so then it, the places you left light look like tree trunks. Yeah, very nice little painting. I like your light goldy yellows in the face of the dome. And you did a good job with that back layer of trees. Very nice. Good. Ooh, look at you, Mary. You've been there before. Very. That's, a long time ago. <laughs> it, it's beautiful. Your sky is gorgeous. Yeah. Very, oh, that's pretty. Yeah, the colors are beautiful. It's very striking. Yeah, with the focal point of the dome and then the sky being so beautiful. Yeah, very nice. I like your little mat too. <laughs> I like my mat. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful though. What a beautiful little nice. thing. Yeah, yours has more crags. It's craggy. Yeah, like you need, you need your, uh, there's no free climbing that. You need your ropes on to crap, climb up that face. <laughs> your colors are beautiful. I love Thank how you. you put the purple in it. And the softness in the very foreground. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah, that's nice. Nice. Again, your sky's beautiful. It really, your dome has a lot of snow on it. Mm. And um, yeah, your forest looks very foresty. 
You did a really nice job. Very nice. Like back layer of trees on, um, I'm forgetting the name of that spot now. Cloud dressed. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Nice. Dee is beautiful. Thanks. Yay, Dee. <laughs> Yours is almost uh, a vignette. Uh, you didn't paint to the edges. You left the the foreground and then below clouds rest white. Mm -hmm. So it's very striking. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. That's fun. I like it in that funky little mat too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, Chris. So I'm certainly not using the same size paper you guys are. The mats are mine are since I went rogue on the first one, I'm going to be rogue on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your painting right is, is beautiful. I don't That's think nice. it's quite done, but what you've done, so, yeah, it's you're just you have a beautiful start on it. Thank you. Mm -mm. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on YouTube. Bye now. <laughs>